So this is round four of the 30th Singapore Open. My opponent is Chris Max Hart, a Singapore bass player. So let's just go ahead with the Rose opening variation uh, with expectations to actually play uh, Shaman opening again and let's see how that works out. So yep, uh, the Shaman variation is quite an early variation opening so chances are that the variation will actually play into the Shaman opening pretty early if the opponent didn't uh, vary it on purpose. So he's played uh, the book variation, which is down to E7. So let's just follow with uh, Shaman opening being more of a edge play kind of opening while being balanced into the center. So this is just flipping one this in one direction and just keeping uh, to the bottom and to the left. So he's played c3, which cuts one this in the diagonal direction. I'll just play a simple hit and tail. So basically, this opens up a quiet move over here to f6. So he's cut across down to f7. Uh, I'll just do a cross back into the center and regroup those discs. So he's taken a move up top to g3, I'll just cut right into the center with uh, e2. And he's gone into the center, uh, so I'll follow up with a cut uh, to d2 as well, just maintaining this center shape. So he's played to g6, I'll just cut down, um, probably over here to a quiet move, which flips one this in one direction, just grouping the entire block of this into the center. So he's played a nice quiet move, cut to the edge. So for this case, I'll play more of a head and tail theory. On the tail end of this move, g5. So he's played c2, I'll play, so the next good move for white that he has created is this, this to f6 which provides a nice access over here to c8. So we want to prevent it uh, by playing g4, uh, bearing in mind that g4 also flips one this to the top diagonal side as well, but uh, the priority right now is to just try to prevent this good shape for white, so that's fine. Uh, it potentially opens up a quiet move for white to the top since I flipped away this disc. 
um, but at the same time I can actually uh, also recapture some moves to the left. So yes, he split the quiet move uh, to the top. Um, in return, I also have one quiet move maybe to d4. Uh, sorry, b4 right now because this this has been removed. Alternatively, I could also go b5, but b5 allows white to actually play b3 that cuts this particular disc that, and this uh, line that we're defending. So at this point in time, I would think that b4 might be more advantageous. Let's go with b4. So, opponent has played f1, probably in an attempt to actually control this mini diagonal over here so that he can follow up with uh, b3 and just continue with tempo. So basically to disrupt that, uh, I could consider actually playing uh, over here to b3. Sometimes uh, when a perceived best move for your opponent is not played, uh, the best move for you would actually be to just jump straight in for the move that he did not take. So just bearing in mind that I'll be flipping this to this in a horizontal direction on the tail end of it. Um, I think it's totally fine to actually allow white to grab g3. So on the intersecting end, if I play to b3, white could potentially actually jump in over here. Um, in response to b5, which gives him a nice intersecting move. So I couldn't I can't really prevent that from happening, but I could potentially poison it by playing a move down below to e8 to actually feed him the unbalanced edge, uh, which would form a disc over here to e8 that could potentially poison this move. If I were to play uh, e8, um, and if he doesn't respond and play somewhere else, maybe to b3 first, I would potentially capture this edge below and trade one black, white, black, white temple exchange and followed by white, uh, followed by black jumping into probably e1. So let's go ahead with e8 first. Just trying to set up that move. So opponent has taken g8, which forms the poison. So we'll just immediately grab b3, and then basically b5 uh, instead of flipping these two discs that are nestled in between. Also requires to flip these two discs as a result of the creation of this b8 disc. And at the same time, black is uh, still in control of this mini diagonal over here.
So one has played uh, f2, basically probably cutting excess to capture f5, that gives him access to c8 to just grab the edge. So over here, let's just go ahead with playing a simple g3. Probably g2 might be an option as well, but it seems almost overly aggressive and uh, unnecessary at this point in time. So let's go with g3 as a centralizing and regroup uh, method to just stay in the game with moves. Anticipating white to go to c8. So what has gone to c8? Um, So over here, I'll just choose to play a quiet move to c7. Bearing in mind that this unbalanced edge is balanceable to b8. But hopefully when he cuts and creates some excess uh, to actually obtain b8, he would create some moves for me as well. So it'll be somewhat of a trade-off. Yep, so basically he's played uh, h6 over here to capture this f4 disc that will give him access to b8. So over here, instead of jumping into h5 almost immediately uh, with a potential response to c8 uh, and potentially I would have to then jump down to h7, I want to consider playing c1 instead which is uh, hit and hit theory um, to create more moves for myself, uh, at least on the left hand side, instead of jumping in immediately to h5 and if he responds to any of the moves on the right I could potentially try to gain some tempo so let's go with c1 So white has basically responded uh, to the right, which is h5. So 
so the response here would be either to take H4 immediately and remove that excess or actually to leave a gap to H3 and probably offer uh, the opponent a poison move uh, to H4. Let's go with H3 to try to preserve tempo. So white has gone for the balance H, uh, therefore I can just jump in uh, over here to H4 in anticipation he might just squeeze in to G8 for parity. But uh, since white has established that 6 disc uh, long H to the bottom, uh, it is potentially a good trade-off for me. So White has chosen to grab the unbalanced edge to the right. We'll just go ahead to go to G7 and just um, try to offer up the corner in exchange for a wedge. Um, obviously White probably wouldn't immediately jump into that, but instead try to play a little bit more along to the left. The top uh, square to E1 is not accessible by White, and hence a spare move for me at this point in time. So white has played um, b6. So the usual response would be to just jump into b5 since it's an open gap uh, and probably nearer to the inside. Um, but we just wanted to look through the edge configurations uh, with potential risks for diagonal control by white. But at this point in time, it doesn't seem there is a risk considering I have uh, E1 as a spare move to cut right back into the diagonal. But we do want to consider whether A6 is actually better than B5. Since the edges are largely white, I don't think that A6 would be better. So let's just go ahead with uh, b5 as a centralizing move. So white has uh, played a move to a6, which is quite a good maneuver over there. So if I do play into a5, white would actually squeeze in for the diagonal control and I take e1 to gain back that excess and he would then capture b1 in exchange. Uh, parity shouldn't be a problem, hopefully, because uh, the top right is still three square uh, white this region that uh, white currently does not have access to. Okay, so let's go ahead with a5.
So white has gone for the diagonal control. Um, so we'll just jump in to actually capture the disk to E4. And just go for the exchange. Um, at least capture the corner to secure a corner first. And then uh, over here, a little bit of a parity assessment, obviously. We're going to go ahead with uh, grabbing the corner to H8, um, mainly to actually remove the E8 disk that provides extra disk uh, for him to actually access this mini diagonal. So he's played uh, A3, which basically he's trying to preserve parity all the way to the end to try to grab the last move. So that is actually a good sequence for white which is probably the best sequence I'll just go ahead and grab the corner and white followed by black and white and finally white would have the last chunk of uh, discs so that was a quite a close shave uh, for me good game for Samuel and of course quite a lucky win for me